Welcome to the Thrill Ride of Death Race 2000, a cult classic that reshaped the sci-fi genre of its time. This film catapults audiences into a dystopian world where a lethal cross-country race dominates the landscape, offering a visceral portrayal of society's obsession with violence and fame. Amidst the chaos, a profound commentary on media manipulation and the dehumanizing effects of extreme entertainment unfolds. The film's captivating premise raises questions about the value of human life and the consequences of unchecked power. It's a tale that sticks with many, prompting reflections on its underlying messages. Have you found a scene or moment in this adrenaline-fueled saga that lingers in your memory, provoking deeper contemplation? We're eager to hear your cherished memories or personal connections to this cinematic marvel in the comments below. Share your stories, and let's dive into the world of Death Race 2000 together. In the dystopian future of Death Race 2000, the iconic and deadly transcontinental road race dominates American culture, serving as both entertainment and political propaganda. Said in the year 2000, the race pits drivers against each other in a brutal competition where points are scored by running over pedestrians. The enigmatic and revered champion, Frankenstein, hides behind a mask, his true identity shrouded in mystery. As the race progresses, it becomes a battleground not just on the road but also within the political landscape, with rebels seeking to disrupt the government's control through the event. The film's unique blend of dark humor, social commentary, and over-the-top action has solidified its cult status. The exaggerated violence, caricatured characters, and satirical take on media and politics left an indelible mark on popular culture, influencing subsequent films and series that explore similar themes of societal decay and extreme entertainment. Death Race 2000 remains a cult classic, remembered for its audacious storytelling and bold cinematic style that challenged norms and expectations of its time, resonating with audiences for generations. Mary Waranov, known for portraying Calamity Jane, didn't have driving skills. A stunt driver handled all the driving scenes for her. In close-ups, Waranov sat in a towed car with a camera crew. The film's premise barely resembles the original short story, The Racer, by Ib Melkir. It focuses on different characters and incidents, omitting Mr. President and Frankenstein. Harold's speech mimics Howard Kosel's mannerisms. These unique aspects added depth to the movie, blending parody with action seamlessly, capturing the essence of the era's entertainment. The movie benefited from Roger Corman's eye for talent. He spotted Sylvester Stallone in The Lords of Flatbush and cast him in this film. Stallone's role added depth to the ensemble, showcasing his early acting chops. Moreover, the film's custom-built cars where it just props the became prized possessions. After the movie wrapped, some of these cars found new homes in car museums, selling for much more than their production cost. The backdrop of the intense race wasn't a mere satit was the Ontario Motor Speedway near Los Angeles, California. The choice of location added authenticity to the thrilling opening track and grandstand scenes, contributing to the movie's overall impact. A blend of Corman's casting vision, the lucrative fate of the movie's cars, and the authenticity of the racetrack all played vital roles in shaping the 1975 cult classic, contributing to its enduring legacy. Sylvester Stallone took charge of some of his dialogue, adding his touch to the film. On the other hand, David Carradine, shifting from a prior TV role, chose Frankenstein to break away from his previous character's shadow and kickstart his movie career. The casting of Don Steele, doubling up as an announcer in another car chase flick, brought a unique familiarity to the role. His presence echoed in Grand Theft Auto, giving audiences a sense of connection. The film's blend of actors seeking new images and familiar faces creating continuity across different movies added layers to the narrative, solidifying its place in cult cinema. This blending of personas and roles gave the movie an extra dimension, resonating with fans through the years. In the 1975 cult classic, Death Race 2000, both David Carradine and Sylvester Stallone took the wheel, showcasing their driving skills in the intense transcontinental road race. Notably, producer Roger Corman joined the action, handling scenes shot on public streets due to the custom-built car's lack of street legality. These cars, central to the film's narrative, pushed boundaries not just on screen but also off, 
with Corman himself navigating their unconventional design. What sets Death Race 2000 apart is its origin. Initially conceived with a serious tone by Corman, he deemed the material kind of vile. Recognizing the potential for dark comedy, he enlisted Robert Tom to rewrite the screenplay, transforming the film into a satirical take on a dystopian future dominated by a deadly road race. This shift laid the foundation for the unique blend of humor, social commentary, and over-the-top action that defines the movie. Beyond the silver screen, Death Race 2000 left a lasting imprint on popular culture. In 1976, Exidy released an arcade video game inspired by the film, titled Death Race. The game's controversial premise, where players gain points by running over stick figures, ignited the first mass outcry against video game violence. This unexpected cultural ripple effect underscores the film's impact beyond its initial release, contributing to discussions on entertainment and its societal implications. As Death Race 2000 hurtled into cinematic history, it not only showcased the driving prowess of Carradine and Stallone, but also revealed Roger Corman's knack for recognizing and reshaping narratives. The film's journey from a serious screenplay to a darkly comedic satire, coupled with its influence on gaming culture, cements its place in the annals of cult cinema, offering audiences a ride that transcends the confines of traditional storytelling. In Death Race 2000, the custom-built cars, though central to the narrative, had an interesting quirk. Most of the time, they didn't run and had to be pushed down hills to create the illusion of speed. The film's crew even undercranked the cameras to make the cars appear faster than they actually were. Adding to the film's behind-the-scenes anecdotes, David Carradine, who portrayed the enigmatic Frankenstein, had a unique demand. He refused to wear leather, prompting costume designer Jane Room to craft his iconic black outfit from an alternative fabric that convincingly mimicked leather. Interestingly, the role of Frankenstein almost had a different face. Initially offered to Peter Fonda, he found the film too ridiculous and declined the role. This pivotal decision led to David Carradine's involvement, shaping the character's portrayal and the film's overall identity. These behind-the-scenes insights shed light on the challenges and creative solutions that contributed to the making of Death Race 2000, adding layers to the cult classic's legacy. As the credits roll and the cinematic curtain descends on the chaotic dystopia of Death Race 2000, take a moment to traverse the roads of your own memories. The roaring engines, the thrill of the chase, and the unsettling blend of satire and adrenaline have etched an indelible mark on the cultural landscape. Perhaps you found resonance in the rebellious spirit of Frankenstein, navigating a society driven by chaos and carnage. Or maybe it's the stark reflection of our own world, where competition veils darker truths. As the dust settles on the cinematic arena, what lingers within you? Is it the screech of tires or the subtle echoes of social commentary? This film, a gasoline-soaked tapestry of rebellion and reflection, invites you to share your journey through its apocalyptic narrative. How did Death Race 2000 shape your perception of a world on the brink? Did it serve as a mirror reflecting the untamed desires and vices embedded in our reality? We invite you to unravel the threads of your thoughts, to dissect the moments that left an impression on your cinematic soul. In a world where the line between entertainment and introspection blurs, your experiences become the asphalt upon which Death Race 2000 races into the horizon of collective consciousness. Share your musings, memories, and revelations, the fuel that propels this cinematic odyssey beyond the screen. Thank you for embarking on this journey through the lens of Death Race 2000. Your reflections add depth to the narrative, transforming a mere film into a shared tapestry of human experience. Until our paths cross again, keep the engines of curiosity and contemplation roaring.